Hey, Jim Wolf here, and welcome to Book Nuggets, where I share a few things from a book I'm reading with you that I hope might be useful or interesting to you, or both. Today's book is called Louder Than Words, The New Science of How the Mind Makes Meaning by Dr. Benjamin K. Bergen. I really enjoyed this book, which is basically about the theory of embodied simulation. And now I'm going to get into three things I learned and three practical takeaways. And so the first thing I learned is basically that the theory of embodied simulation means that we understand language by simulating in our minds what it would be like to experience the things that the language is saying using the same parts of the brain that we would use to actually experience it. And that might be why we love hearing stories so much. It's a lot easier for our brain to process someone's really descriptive story than it is to look at a more abstract math problem, for example. And so it seems like if this theory is true, that it would be harder to understand a math problem because it's further removed from our actual physical experience in the world. And so what the embodied simulation theory is saying from my understanding of this book is that we understand what people are saying to us, what we read, and the language around us by trying to simulate an experience of what the language is saying in our mind using the same parts of the brain that we use to actually experience it in the world. And so the closer something is to our actual experience, the easier it's going to be for us to understand it. And I think that makes common sense. And so the theory of embodied simulation is the first thing that I learned. And related to that, the second thing that I learned from Louder Than Words is that meaning is based on our experiences in our particular bodies in the particular situations that we have dragged our bodies through. And because of that, meaning is personal and can definitely vary from person to person and across cultures. And I'm going to read a quote from the book that I think nicely summarizes the theory of embodied simulation and the fact that meaning can vary so much from person to person and culture to culture. And so in the book on page 16, uh, Dr. Bergen says, If meaning is based on experience with the world, the specific actions and percepts an individual has had, so your life experience, then it may vary from individual to individual and from culture to culture. And meaning will also be deeply personal. What polar bear or dog means to me might be totally different than what it means to you. Moreover, if we use our brain systems for perception and action to understand, then the processes of meaning are dynamic and constructive. It's not about activating the right symbol. It's about dynamically constructing the right mental experience of the scene. Okay, so I'm going to read that again. It's not about activating the right symbol. It's about dynamically constructing the right mental experience of the scene. That's what he's saying about how we create meaning. Furthermore, if we indeed make meaning through simulating sights, sounds, and actions, that would mean that our capacity for meaning is built upon other systems, ones evolved more directly for perception and action. And that in turn would mean that our species-specific ability for language is built up from systems that we actually share in large part with other species. And so I think that quote from the book is a really good summary of what Dr. Bergen is talking about throughout the book. And then the third thing that I learned is a word called idealect. So we all know dialect. That's basically a distinctive way that a group of people uses language. And an idealect is an individual's distinctive and unique use of language. So basically what he's saying is each individual person, because we all have different life experiences, has their own way of using language. And that's called an idealect. And I know that even twins have very different life experiences. And so even an individual that's a twin and has had a very similar upbringing will still have an idealect. And so I think that word is really interesting. We all have an idealect. I guess it's kind of the subunit of a dialect that is for an individual. And I think it's just like cultures. We're part of a culture, but we're also an individual. And so idealect, I think, is a cool word. And it provides a really nice transition into my three practical takeaways. Because the first one is that we all create meaning in a unique way, like we just talked about. And so understand that your unique perspective has value. Nobody has the exact same life experience that you do. 
And so your way of looking at something, your way of thinking about something has value. It might be the way that you say things that someone else needs to hear. So just because an idea is out there and someone else is talking about it, don't be afraid to think about it and talk about it in your own way because someone can hear the same message from a hundred people and because you said it in your way, they can finally resonate with it and take action on it. And so your perspective has value and so does the perspective of other people, of course. And so that is something that we can share together is our own unique perspective. And if we're open to that, then it makes everything easier, more fun, and we become more effective. And so be open to other people's perspectives and realize that your own perspective has tremendous value. And the second practical takeaway that I got from this book is to really work on how you communicate and how you tell stories. The more descriptive details that you can give people that allows them to create an accurate representation of what you're talking about in their mind, the, the better that you can do that, the more powerful your message is going to be and the better communicator that you're going to be. So a prime example of this is the thing that we all learn when we learn to give better PowerPoint presentations. And we all know that we should cut the text for the most part off of our PowerPoint presentations and use mostly pictures. So we've all heard that advice and it's great advice because obviously a picture is worth a thousand words because a picture is much more closely related to our actual physical experience in the world. Okay, so keep that in mind when you are telling stories, when you're communicating. Try to make your communication as close to some real world experience as possible. So when someone is listening to you, they're going to be able to easily put together what you're saying and why in their mind if this theory of embodied simulation is correct. And so this is pretty standard advice, but it's another reason why we should take a look at how we give presentations, how we talk to each other, how we write, how we speak, and how we listen. And just keep in mind when someone's listening to you, they're going to be actively trying to simulate what you're talking about in their mind. And so make that as easy as possible for them and you'll be a more effective communicator. And number three, Tony Robbins says that nothing has any meaning except for the meaning you give it. And I tend to agree. So many of us tell stories about our lives that don't serve us. And so because meaning is a creative process, it's something that we dynamically create, that we dynamically construct based on our own experience. First of all, you can create meaning that serves you better. So I encourage you to start telling yourself empowering stories and creating meaning in a way that's powerful for you. And if you need to, get more and different experiences so that you have a different way of making meaning in your life. You might need to move to another place. That might allow you to create different meanings out of your life. You might need to make a few new friends. You might need to try something new. You might need to face a fear that you've had before. So give your physical body more practical experience so that you can create meaning in your life that's more powerful for you. And so you can stop telling yourself and other people disempowering stories and start telling yourself empowering stories that allow you to take action in your life and allow you to be more fulfilled and allow you to reclaim your power. So meaning is a powerful thing. It's one of the most important things that we do as humans is creating meaning. This is one theory of how we might do that. I think it's very compelling. So I definitely recommend giving louder than words, the new science of how the mind makes meaning a read. I put the Amazon link to the book below this video for you. So definitely go give that a read. And if you do check it out, let me know your thoughts. And with that, I'm Jim Wolf, and I'll be back with more soon. Cheers.